Hello, Home Slices. It's Kira with Home Slice Adult and coming to you with my review of Love and Marriage Huntsville um, season one, episode like 19 or something. I'll put it down uh, the correct name and number of the episode in the uh, description and down here at the bottom of the screen whatever y'all i'm having a hard time putting my words together this morning good morning it is monday morning uh the first day of the week i had a rough weekend for any of you who watched my last vlog but um it's a new week it's a new day and um i'm gonna be taking care of business today that's what's happening so that's that anyways um, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this review, but thank you for clicking on this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share it with someone who you think will enjoy it. So, um, I'm going off of memory. So forgive me if I forget anything. Actually, I need to forgive me if I forget anything because I'm really hard on myself about that. Like, that's why I have to take notes because if I don't, I know I'm going to forget something and I get really mad at myself for not, uh, remembering stuff. So. Uh, or you know saying the things that I want to say about the episode but anyways so I um enjoyed last night's episode um unfortunately things are getting ugly between Martel and Mel they were already ugly but now it's getting nasty okay um we see that Mel um, has basically moved out of the house and is allowing Martel to take care of the kids by himself because she just needs to move out while the divorce papers are being drawn up. And um, I think it is wonderful that despite um, despite what's going on between them and the fact that she is filing divorce papers that she has enough trust in her husband that he will take care of the kids while she is away. Um, you know, but based on who you are, what you think, what you have been socialized to believe, a lot of the times it feels automatic for a woman to like take her children and leave. Um, you know, pack up the kids and go and, and all that stuff. And um, the fact that she's, you know, is not taking anything away from Martell as a father. Um, still a good thing and that she knows that he's a good dad so anyways that's the silver lining around that very dark cloud but anyways we see Tisha and Mel have a conversation they tell each other about their own troubles or whatever and that's when Tisha finds out that Mel is pregnant and for the first time I feel like they are genuinely bonding that they are legitimately rebuilding their friendship and I feel like even in the confessionals, Mel is not being as nasty towards uh, Tisha. And that they are really like working on it. And I think that that apology from a couple episodes ago really kind of helped them to reset their friendship. So that was good to see them kind of pull it back together. Um, so yeah, they tell each other about their troubles. Mel talks about, you know, filing papers and Tisha talks about, you know, the argument that she had with Marceau about him not, um, basically only working and not doing anything else to contribute to their household. So, um, they bond over that. Anyways, um, you know, what just came to my mind that misery loves company. Just because Martel and Mel have been, uh, were kind of on a campaign to reveal Marceau as a cheater. And so now I think that things have escalated between Tisha and Marceau. Because while Tisha kind of plays dumb, we come to find out that she's actually pretty smart <laughs> later on in the show. But anyways... Uh, Y'all, I'm trying to remember all the stuff that happened. Let's talk about Kimmy and Maurice because I think we only really saw them one or two times. And uh, we saw him like chatting, web chatting or whatever, video chatting with Kyla, his ex-wife. Kyla was having a hard time finding a job in Huntsville. Y'all, I don't know why she would move 
from wherever she is, where she's established, down to Huntsville. Huntsville might be like up and coming, but it's still Alabama. <laughs> No offense to anybody who's from Alabama. My boyfriend is from Alabama. There are good people there. But when you look at list um, of like, oh, 50 states by income or education level, Alabama is like always number 49 because Mississippi is number 50. So I personally would not move to Alabama. No way. No way. I would send my son and have... Uh, faith in the fact that he is in the capable hands of his father okay send that boy where he need to go all right and the money that you save on child care and uh remodel your house or something i don't know <laughs> will she pay him child support y'all think kava would pay maurice child support i don't know that's an interesting question anyways Kimmy gets upset because during this video chat, there's a discussion about, and I didn't even think about this, a discussion about Kaiwa wanting to send her son to church, which is a great thing. Um, you know, if you're raising the church or raising your children in the church, you still want them to have that even if you're not around. So I get that, um, but I hadn't even thought about it. So she... <laughs> she's like oh I want him to go to a non-denominational church and Maurice is like okay we'll work that out because he is used to obliging her every want and desire when it comes to his son and Kimmy gets upset because hearing this conversation she hears uh, once again Kyla gets whatever she wants and nobody cares about what Kimmy thinks and the part that I didn't like where I thought Maurice got a little nasty was uh, when Kimmy said, oh, that's good for you. Now, granted, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't super nice, but I think that she was speaking from how she felt. I think Maurice's response to her was nasty. So she says, oh, that's good for you. And he says, no, what you mean good for me and not for us? And she's like, no, I said it was good for you. And uh, he's like, well, I thought it would be good for us as a family, but I guess you don't feel the way about Monster that I do. Now, to me, that was a dig. Uh, and that he was in his feelings. And once again, it becomes about Maurice getting his way. And everyone catering to his needs and him doing what he needs to do so that he can get what he wants. Now, granted, it's a worthy cause. You know, fighting for your children is definitely understandable. But for you to invite anything that happens during like the first year of your marriage can like set you off on like this really interesting course. I think that it would have been better for Maurice to have this fight before he got married so that Kimmy already knew what she was kind of getting herself into. But unfortunately, it happened after they were married. And so Kyla is faced with the thought that Kimmy's not going anywhere. Kimmy is faced with the thought that my husband is always going to cater to Kyla and let him talk to me any kind of way, talk about me any kind of way, and that our household is going to have the influence of Kyla because she wants to make sure her child is raised in a certain way. And then when I go to the grocery store, I got to see her picking up groceries in the house that me and my husband are paying for. You see what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's not a great way to start off. A marriage um, and while I think that Kimmy definitely has a point and I think that her opinion is definitely being neglected when it comes to her husband um, I feel like the argument is kind of getting old and I think that the best way for them to take care of it is to actually have some action behind it and it looks like during the next episode which is actually the reunion show that we will uh, get there. That we finally see Kimmy stop being the, uh, I won't say mature, 
we stop seeing her be the reserved, calm person and actually, you know, get upset. That's what I like to see because that's real. You are actually upset by the fact that your husband does not defend you against Kaiwa. And instead of letting those emotions like soar, you hold them back. And you know how like people cry when they uh, can't fight? Or like you, uh, or you wanna hit somebody and you get so mad that you are so upset that you can't do what you wanna do? That to me feels like the emotional thing that Kimmy has been doing. That she is so upset that she can't really tell Kyra what she wants to tell her. That she just gets so mad and that she her response is to cry instead of actually to yell and scream and fight. You know, whether that's an argument or physically. <laughs> but anyways, that's it for Kimmy and Maurice. So let's talk about Tisha and Marcel real quick. Y'all, uh, I like Miss Wanda, but she is out of line. I think Tisha's out of line too. And I think Marceau is out of line. Everybody in that house, all the adults in that house are out of line. And here's why. Marceau is out of line for um, not being a more involved husband and father. That's why. Um, he is out of line because it is his actions that are creating the need for Miss Wanda to be there to help Tisha out. And if he pitched in more, he could get what he wanted. But he has no desire to do so. And he has told us that in no unclear language, okay? So that's one. Two, Miss Wanda is wrong because she has interjected herself into her daughter's marriage in a way that is unhealthy, that is disrespectful, that is inappropriate. And for her to basically taunt Marceau and say, I'm not going anywhere unless my daughter says I'm going somewhere. And for him to not have that authority in his own house, that's why Tisha is wrong. Yeah, that's why Tisha is wrong. You can't allow your mother to run your household or allow your mother to disrespect your husband by staying where she's not wanted. I think that Tisha might have made the decision worse because Tisha now has essentially chosen her mom over her husband in this instance. So uh, that's no good. So they're all wrong. But let's talk about Tisha and Marceau at this podcast. So, yeah, let's talk about them at the podcast. And we'll talk about what happened before later. At the podcast, Tisha and Marceau sit down because, uh, what's her name? Mel was supposed to be Tisha's guest. I'm under the impression that this was her first podcast. Everybody doing podcasts now, okay? Uh, anyways, y'all. I like Tisha. I think that some of her, some of the ways about her are actually a little immature and naive. Um, and then there's some aspects of her where I think she's pretty smart. But uh, nonetheless, I would never listen to a podcast from, from Tisha. And isn't she supposed to be getting like help for her speech? She clearly, from what I saw from this podcast, does not have the skills to successfully conduct an interview. Things went sour <laughs> pretty quickly <laughs> on that podcast, I think. I think that if you're going to do something like that, if you're going to have a podcast and have it be the way that uh, the structure that... Tisha has it, you definitely have to, like, study your stuff. You definitely have to, like, if you have an introduction that you're going to read every time the podcast comes on, have it together. Have your questions together. Be prepared. And it felt like because she was talking to her husband, um, and because he was kind of like a last minute, oh, yeah, well, you know, I didn't think about that. From the way Tisha described it, she canceled her interview with Mel 
and then had her husband come on the next day. So maybe she had some time to be prepared, but maybe she did. But either way, I feel like she wasn't prepared to conduct this podcast. And um, I think that Tisha is not interesting enough to hold a podcast herself. She needs to have somebody else with her. Uh, maybe Kimmy. I don't think Mel because I don't think that they would work well together. Um, yeah, I don't think that they would work well together all the time. Tisha by herself to me cannot carry a podcast, okay? The girl, uh, you know, has the personality of a cucumber. Anyways, so she, uh, they have a, a, a conversation. Um, and then we learned something, or I learned something that I definitely did not know. Marceau proposed to Tisha after a month. Y'all, the first thing that came to my mind is that it was predatory, okay? He preyed upon Tisha. Now, here's my theory. Marceau has always been a ladies' man. He's always been a philanderer. And he knew that if he wanted to continue his philandering ways, he had to get him a wife that would be, you know, not wise to his exploits with other women. So he picked a woman that he thought was not as intelligent as he was, that he thought was immature or naive, someone that he could pluck straight from um, college, and someone who would have his children and who would take care of the house so much so that she would never get word that, um, never get word back that he was cheating on. And that worked for 13 years, apparently, until uh, Martel threw him under the bus just recently. <laughs> but, um, and that's why Marceau is playing nice. Instead of strongly defending himself against these accusations, he is um, really just not not defending like he's not defending himself at all he's playing nice because if it comes back to Tisha that he actually is cheating and some evidence is produced the house of cards that Marcel has built over the past 13 years will come crumbling to the ground Miss Wanda gonna be right Tisha gonna be heartbroken and she gonna take Marcel for everything that he got okay so yeah I think that Tisha and Marceau's family is starting to crumble and the fairy tale that Tisha has built up in her head uh, is gone away. And I think that part of her, um, I think that part of her wants to ignore the fact that her husband might be cheating on her. And for some people, that's the way it goes, right? Like, I don't want to know. Don't tell me, let me live, you know, ignorance is bliss. Uh, and that's okay, you know, people do, you know, what they want to do and what best serves them mentally. So I can definitely see if that's the way she wants to do it. But she's not totally stupid because she told him that she has a mad money account so that when mad day comes or divorce day comes that she has an account that she's been putting money into, like deducting money automatically for like, how long did she say? For like eight years. Because apparently when they uh, got to about five years of marriage, they had a really hard, uh, really hard time. And there was some talk about them breaking up. And so ever since then, her his aunt told her, you need to have you an account on the side. So she's been stack stashing away money for eight years. She's smarter. She's smarter than we give her credit for, okay? So go ahead. Uh, anyways, moving on. I think that's it for Marceau. And Tisha. The rest of the show, we're going to talk about Martel and Mel. So, Mel comes back home to the house after being gone for a few days, and they're there for gender reveals. I feel like I've said this to y'all before. Um, I hate gender reveals. I hate the emphasis that we place on gender because a lot of it is um, a lot of the emphasis that we place on gender is uh, very misogynistic. And that uh, what we think women do or want to do or the colors that they wear or the toys that they can have are uh, ruled by what 
parts they were born with. And that doesn't make sense. What if my daughter likes to play baseball or football? But because I'm having a daughter, all she gets is dolls and whatnot. It just doesn't make sense. People have different interests and people get to decide what they want to do despite what society says that they will do. So, like, where did girls wearing pink and boys wearing blue even come from? I heard that that was made up, like, in the 50s. It just doesn't make sense. What if my child, my male child, wears yellow? Like, who cares? <laughs> Gender reveals are silly to me. One, because they are an extra expense. Why don't you just have a baby shower? But, like, who cares? Like, you're having a healthy baby. Who cares if it's a, a boy or a girl? Who cares? It shouldn't really matter. So, I hate gender reveals. That's just me. But, anyways, uh, moving on. That's, like, a very forward-thinking... <laughs> a very forward-thinking thing that I did not get from my family. Something that, uh, you know, a mindset that I had to develop on my own. But anyways, um, there's a gender reveal happening. Y'all, when I tell y'all Mel barely looks pregnant at this stage, like, I don't know how she barely looks pregnant. I know she was thin, but she has a baby going inside of her and she still looks great. Like, not pregnant. But anyways, so she gets home and she's upset because the house is a mess. She comes home, she apparently texts him or called him or whatever and was like, uh, oh, do you have everything taken care of for the gender reveal? Martel said something along the lines of, yes, she gets home, the floor is dirty, the uh, tables are dirty, the beds ain't made up. She got to come home after not being there for a few days and clean up messes that she did not make. And she's like, oh, you're number, you know, number one dad of the year. And then you can't even make sure the house is clean while you're taking care of the children. Now, one thing I will say that I don't think either of them really acknowledges is that they are great parents because they are great parents together. I grew up in a household where I was raised by a single parent. And when you're a single parent and you have to work and take care of the kids, things slip through the cracks. They are great parents because they had each other. And that in areas where Martel couldn't pick up the slack, Mel was there and vice versa. So, um, Mel was saying stuff, you know, to Tisha later on about how, you know, well, when I was taking care of the kids, I had to clean up and do all this stuff. And, and he's going to realize, you know, all of the stuff that I did for the kids. Because I do feel like a lot of times Martel minimizes uh, who Mel is as a parent. and feels like because he has to pick up so much slack that Mel's not doing what she is supposed to do. And I think that's unfair. But anyways, they have this gender reveal. It was great to see Martel's, both of his parents there, his mom and his dad, they're getting along. So that was great. Um, and they do the gender reveal. They're having a girl. And it's like Mel can't even really be happy about it. It's so unfortunate. And if we listen to Miss Iyanla, and y'all talks about how babies kind of stew and like side the mother's womb. And so now that male is dealing with these issues, now that male is dealing with these issues of getting a divorce and bad feelings toward her husband, like what is her baby marinating in? That's like an y'all man's head type of question or whatever but anyways she um again can't even really be happy about it but they find out that they're having a girl so dark's old messy ass who knows that they going through a situation right now was like oh y'all was talking about having five kids this is only number four y'all gonna have another one so dark shut up you know they're going through something right now. You're an idiot. And you're the person who convinced him to use social media. Which was like the last straw for Mel. Sadark. Sadark is a pot stirrer. And I knew it from the start, okay? The way he came on the show, he was stirring the pot. I don't know. Sometimes I like Sadark and sometimes I don't. I don't know. Uh, anyways. So, uh... So, 
Mel, of course, gets an attitude. <laughs> After Sadark makes that comment, Martell is like, oh, well, ask Mel. And Mel's like, do you really want them to ask me? Do you really want them to ask me? And I'm like, uh, like, girl, if y'all gonna get on here and pretend to be happy over a baby that's gonna be, uh, well, maybe not pretend to be happy. If y'all are gonna get on here and fake the funk, um, and, and have this family-oriented event, when y'all really not feeling like family right now, the least you can do is put on a happy face, okay? <laughs> That's the least you can do. If you're going to pretend, pretend, okay? You got to be all the way into the role of happy wife if you're going to pretend at this gender reveal. You can't be like, oh, we're having a baby. I'm so happy about the baby. Don't ask me. Don't. Uh -uh. You really want them to ask me? Come on now. Anyways, so... um. We see, I think the last thing we see about Martell and Mel, oh no, they go to a, a photo gallery opening for Neville, who's a photographer, and uh, which I think is a great thing, opening his own gallery and, you know, selling his art and giving some of the proceeds to the Boys and Girls Club, I think is great. So anyways, they... Um, He's like following her around there. They show up separately. He's trying to talk to her. He's like, when are you going to allow me to talk to you? Like the thing that I don't like about the whole Martell situation, once again, is that he feels like he is one, he, the stuff he was doing before his wife found out that he was cheating on him is going to work to help repair their relationship. And it's not enough. And he's not fighting hard enough. And I think that's what Mel was saying. Like, he hasn't really given me a reason to stay. He's not fighting hard enough. He's not fighting differently enough. He's going to keep doing the things that he's been doing and think that that's enough to keep his wife. And it's not. So, um, then we see him follow her. He sees her driving. Y'all, Huntsville is too small a town if you can see your wife driving somewhere and follow her. But, um, anyways... He sees his wife driving to um, Tisha's podcast, and he follows her to the parking lot. They have some type of weird discussion. It's kind of almost not coherent, because you got the cameraman saying, oh, you know, they're not mic'd up. Let's go over and check this out. Uh, and they have an argument, again, that's not really coherent to me personally, but... Um, Sounds like they're arguing about the same thing. She's not answering the phone. He keeps calling her. She don't want to hear from him unless it's about the kids. And they're, you know, just having this, this argument. Um, and then she gets mad and she's like, oh, you're supposed to be number one dad of the year, remember? And yeah, it gets nasty. And then he leaves and he's like, oh, love you, ma'am. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's time for you all to put this marriage out of its misery if you all are gonna behave like this like it's really not good for your children to see it's not good for the world to see we all know that divorces get nasty and I really wonder how uh, this is gonna be my last thought because this video is getting kind of long I wonder how Mel felt about the whole situation before they got this show because I'm under the impression that she would have been even more mad when she was closer to finding out about him cheating on her. So the fact that she, so the fact that she, uh, is still so mad now tells me that she put, she might've put her madness on hold because she could have divorced him years ago when she first found out that he had cheated on her for a year and a half or two years, however long it was. And so, I wonder if this deal with Owen was already in the works and that she maintained her marriage with Martell so that she could be a part of the show. Now, I, uh, I don't know. Just saying. But thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you thought about this episode. What do you think about the couples and the drama that's going on in their lives? We all know marriage ain't easy, even for those of us who are not married. Because married people tell us all the time that marriage ain't easy. But what do you think that each of the couples should do? Thanks for watching. Peace out, home slices.